So for our third segment, we are talking about uh, concepts in, in like the realm of like evolutionary psychology. Um, and specifically, we're talking about like, and, and this is like, you know, kind of a, a growing field for a while there, it was kind of discredited in like the 1960s through like 80s or so. But we're like, the more we have done, uh, you know, experimentation, in combination with like fMRI and uh, neuroscience research, like we really are learning a lot about the history of the evolution of the human brain, the types of functions that it's quite good at versus the kinds of functions that it's not very good at or kind of deficient in. And using like those fMRI and, neuro and neurology uh, uh, s like study combined with these psychological experimentation methods, we're starting to understand what kinds of things um, like the human brain is kind of engineered to do. And, and in many ways, the kinds of things that gave humans as a species an edge such that we could take over the whole fucking world. Mm. And the more we study it, the more it seems to indicate that what humans are really good at the things that the th the changes that took place moving from uh, other like Homo erectus species to into Homo sapiens, the the real things that made the difference were kind of two main things, and both of them are connected, and, and both of them are kind of connected through our linguistic faculties, mm. right? And our linguistic faculties arose out of um, these like physiological changes in our brain that that. Uh, that are, that gave rise to conceptual thinking, right? And yeah. one of them is cooperation. Yes, right is the ability to communicate, to develop like social connections, to organize into like social groups, things like that, and and organize around common goals, which yes. leads to the second thing, which is conceptual thinking, thinking about things that are purely concepts, something like money, for example. You know, yes, there might be a physical instantiation of it, but it's not anything of inherent value. It is purely conceptual value. And yeah. these and those two things in combination enable us to organize not just in little groups, but in huge scale and to coordinate yeah. for common goals, even ones that are conceptual or remote. The interesting thing about both of those like evolutionary uh, processes, both of those results is that neither of them are any fucking good if you're by yourself in the woods with a knife yeah yeah <laughs> so this is actually a lecture that i give to my students every semester so if any of my former students are, are listening um, you'll, you'll probably recognize this but what i say is I, I tell everybody raise your hand if you've ever been in a fight with a bear <laughs> and you know nobody ever raised usually their, like no some, one raised their... <laughs> like yeah sometimes a person will raise their hand just to like you know just to be just silly to mess with you, yeah you know and of course like every time they do that i'll pretend they're being legit and they'll just have to awkwardly be like oh i was just joking no, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's my dog named bear <laughs> yeah um and then i say so what do you think would happen if you got into a fist fight like you would you know just a fist fight with a bear. Yeah, you're naked. And <laughs> yeah, and the, and and of course the answer is always like, well, you'd die. Yeah. You'd obviously die. And I was like, okay, so why is that? Small teeth, small claws, weak, slow. Exactly. Physically, bears are superior to us in every single conceivable way. Yeah. So then that poses the question, why is it that we run the world and not bears? You know, well, you might say, well. I mean, opposable thumbs, that might have some part of it, but yeah. I mean, bears could very easily like empower, overpower us, enslave us and force us yeah. to build stuff. Next for time them. you run into a bear, use your opposable thumbs to defeat yeah. it. <laughs> like, exactly. That's the thing. Oh, what are you going to exactly. use them to climb a tree? Well, the bear can fucking climb a tree. What are you going to use it to make a tool? Well, that requires higher order functioning. Exactly. So the reason why humans have been able to build all that we build, the reason why we can beat the bears is because of communication. It's because of language. It's because of our ability to collaborate with other people. We're able to collaborate in order to, you know, we could form a hunting group mm -hmm. and we could all have our different roles in order to bring down the bear. Yeah. All right. And some of those roles could even be 
not even people in the hunting group. Some of those roles could be the people that make the weapons that the hunting group uses. Yeah, All right. totally. That's why you're able to do that. You're able to build buildings that yep. protect you from the outside elements. You do that through cooperation. To the second point that Michael made, which was specifically about the idea of conceptual thinking, that goes back to the idea of social constructionism. Mm -hmm. Now, social constructionism, I mean, we, we hear that term thrown around a lot, like politically. Maybe here's you what do it in means. Your circles. I don't know. About <laughs> well, I mean, politically. It, like, oh, gotcha. It very rarely comes up at work for me, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it comes up at work for me. But I mean, like in political, in political groups, it's often thrown around as like, you know, either left wing people will throw it around as like, yes, everything's a social construction, or right wingers will point it, will throw it out and be like, the idea of something being a social construct is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But let's understand what it actually means on an academic level. The idea behind a social construction on an academic level is that you start to form your own sense of self through your interactions with others. Mm -hmm. And you form your perceptions of the world through your, your interactions with others. Mm -hmm. So the example that Michael gave was money. All right. We agree that money has value because we agreed on that. Yeah, for no right. fucking reason. <laughs> for no fucking reason. Like, if tomorrow we all decided that the dollar no longer has value, it wouldn't have any value. Yep. All right? If but we note, decided... But no, that doesn't make it fake. Because if any one of us yeah. decided that the dollar didn't have value, it would lose yeah. no value at all. Exactly. It would lose no value at all. If everyone decided that now our currency is bottle caps, it would become bottle caps. If one person decided that, like... That'd that's just, be just some... a weird dude collecting bottle caps. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I use that example because that's what they do in Fallout. Um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Could you but, imagine uh... making it rain with bottle caps though? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually do. Like, I when I when I when I when I do have a bottle cap in my hand, I do think like if I was in Fallout, right now... <laughs> some um, rich motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but yeah, like, so we form that sense of self through our interactions with others and humans are uniquely have uniquely evolved to develop that. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why all of that is important to understand is that what that means is that no matter how individualistic you are or how individualistic you want to be, you can't live in a vacuum. Yeah. Even if you're a hermit, like, you still can't really live in a vacuum sure. because there are all of the skills that you would need to learn in order to be a hermit, you would have still had to learn those from somewhere, sure. from someone. Yeah, like, totally. Like, if, you, if you, you take a baby out and just plop it in the forest, it would just die because sure. human babies are useless, all right? They yeah. can't do a damn thing. They have to be taken care of, mm -hmm. which means that it doesn't matter who you are. If you are alive today, you have had to coordinate or cooperate or yeah. receive help from other humans. It is simply the reason why we have been a successful, be it been a success. It is the reason why humans continue to be the dominant species and continue to survive is our ability to rely mutually on each other and to organize together, not individually. And like, so it's, it's, it's interesting to think of like the Republican party is like the party of like, you know, rugged individualism and each person bootstrapping and standing up on their own and all this stuff. And, and it's interesting to think like back on like Obama's speech, like wh Republicans were fucking outraged when he came out and w made his, like, you didn't build that speech. Yeah. And his deeper point was that none of us started from zero. All of yeah. us started at the, like, certainly in the United States, all of us started in one of the most advanced countries on earth. And in yeah. many, you know, in many countries, you know, you'd be better off, uh, you know, starting off there because if something went wrong, you would not be just be left to the wolves. But <laughs> yeah. like, but like the point is that no matter how individualistic you claim to be, in truth, you're not, right? In truth, you are dependent on, you are both dependent and you want to be dependent on the world and the people around you. And so the idea, like, it's just an incredible amount of cognitive dissonance and like, and like double thinking to say, I'm a rugged individualist. Because like, when you say you're a rugged individualist, when you're an individualist, what you're saying is, 
like two conflicting things. On the one hand, you think that you should that you can stand on your own, and everybody else should stand on their own. Yeah. Right? Because you because one, you can't, <laughs> to Nathan's point. And two, but but the thing is like you be- because you believe that you can, you believe others should, and when they don't, which they can't, so when they fail, you blame them. Yeah. Leads to all kinds of like like double standards and and all of these beliefs where you're happy to accept all of the help of and benefits of the community around you, but you don't want to have those benefits in the community around you offered to anybody else. Yeah. I mean, this is the reason why oftentimes when it comes to human progress, what is progressive today will very likely be conservative in 30, 40 so years. Hmm. All right. Give you an example. Civil unions Hmm. used to be the progressive point of view. Civil unions (laughs) for gay couples, that used to be the progressive point of view. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's the conservative point of view. Yeah. Like if you're saying civil unions, not marriage, that's very conservative, actually. That's even conservative within within the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. Because humans do have this natural desire to become better. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And part of that, the only way that can really be achieved is through cooperation. So to put it this way, think about the Middle Ages. All right. Think about feudalism. When you had all of the power mainly put into like nobles and kings, there was no middle class, right? There was just the upper class and the peasants, Mm -hmm. right? There were so few minds working to make decisions. And oftentimes like there would be advisors that would be scared of contradicting what the king would say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That you couldn't really progress very much Mm -hmm. because you could only progress as much as the person who has power. And if only one person has power, and especially if that person's a fucking idiot, which they usually were, (laughs) you're not going to progress. Or even just a normal fucking average person. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Could you imagine how awful it would be to be the king? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the reason why in our current society that we've been able to progress is because more people have power than they used to. Now, yeah. of course, we talk about on the pod that it's still, there is still a huge disproportionality of power, mm-hmm. mainly based on wealth inequality. That is absolutely true. It used to be a lot worse. Yeah. And the only way we've been able to get better is by working on trying to distribute that power more, Mm -hmm. which is why income inequality is such a problem because money is power. And the more money you have, the more power you have. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're smart. Some of them might be, but it doesn't necessarily mean that by necessity. Evident by the fact that, you know, you have some idiot like Elon Musk who was able to buy Twitter and colossally (laughs) fuck it up. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but but to your point, like spread, like it's a great argument. Like spreading out power has led to a tremendous amount of progress. Like money is power. Spreading out money helps, and and not just via redistribution in terms of like salaries or whatever, but like redistribution in terms of like education, social benefits. Like all of the progressive issues are things that are literally meant to be investments in our collective good. Yeah, and it's like. The people that argue against that are, have this double standard in mind based on a totally erroneous and honestly anti-human idea, right? Like literally like not based in the things that differentiate humans from other animals idea yeah. that the individual is the most important and powerful yeah. and, you know, unit that we can yeah. all stand I on mean, our own. Running the risk of committing the appeal to nature fallacy. Sure. Like, you wouldn't want to do that. that's absolutely, that is true, though. Like, humans do have an innate need to cooperate with each other. And sure. the more cooperation that we do, the more that we're able to achieve. So, you know, I, again, I'm not saying that just because it's human nature, it's good, but no, it is good and it's human nature. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 